So when somebody feels like family, you have to kind of treat them like family, right? And so um, if, if you know somebody that, that needs uh, uh, some help in some situation or something like that, don't, don't be ashamed to ask for prayer from the brotherhood and the sisterhood and the body of Christ because that's what we do. Um, I know Pastor David, I'm, I haven't talked to him. I haven't got a text from him. I, praying that he's doing better. A lot of the folks that have gotten sick over the last couple of weeks, they're starting to recuperate, and we're, we're thanking God for that. The younger they are, the quicker they recuperate. The older we get, uh, the road's a little bit longer. And it may not be like a three- to five-day road. It might be like a two- to three-week road, but we're still on that road. Can you say amen? All right, last but not least, I want to mention to you that the books did go on sale. There's still a few more. I don't even know how many are left because a lot of people went and bought them. We only bought a certain amount of books, and so if you want that book, we're going to be starting. Ooh, I, you know what? I'm not even sure if we're starting next Monday. Next Monday is the first Monday. that ah, We'll find out. I will, I will get the information to you, but we're starting really quick. We want you to get the book. It is? It is? In two weeks. We want you to get the book so that you can read the introduction. Don't feel like you're cheating if you start reading into the first chapter. Because after reading that introduction, it's really tough to put it down and say, no, I'm not going to read no more. This is a good book, and this book is directed towards our church. A lot of the reading that the women do and the men do on Monday nights directed towards us as men, as disciples, as women, as, as men and women of God, this book is focusing on our church. And we're, we're, not, we're not the, you know, our, just like your families, you, you may not see your family as the best family in the world, but it's your family. Right. It's your family. Right. And I think every church, every person in every church needs to think of that as this is the best place. This is where I'm at. This is my family. This is the, I want the best for this place. I want the best for this family. And I think this book is really going to be a big help in that area and so as as an encouraging word i just want to let you know that uh get that book 17 bucks am i correct 17 bucks right after you can go into that lobby there in the office and they'll get it to you and i think it'll be an incredible blessing as you join us on this journey of health yeah. emotional health right yeah. mental health healthy people because healthy people produce healthy yeah, people sure. right in the world when we was crazy we produced Okay, let's not go there. That's a whole sermon in a different mind. Let's get ready to give to the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. You know, I was thinking, the Lord Jesus Christ, how good he is. That song that we sang, all my life, all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. I want to read a scripture out of Matthew chapter 5 where Jesus speaks of the Beatitudes. And he says these words, excuse me, he says these words, chapter 5, verse number 3. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be, not they might be, not they could be but they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. That's a powerful, powerful statement, verse 6. For they will be filled. And blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they will will see God. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. We all need to be peacemakers. Yes, for they will be called the children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And he says something very unique. Blessed are you when people insult you, when they persecute you, when they falsely say, falsely accuse you of all kinds of evil and they come against you, rejoice, be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you, you're no better and you're no worse. What an awesome statement the Lord gives us here. 
Re rejoice because your reward in heaven yes. is going to be great. Amen. Everything we do here is not for a blessing here as much as for an installment of what God has for us in heaven. There's an old song we used to sing about laying our crowns before the Lord Jesus. There's actually a new song out that has that in one of the verses. The Bible says we're going to take our crowns and we're going to lay them at the feet of Christ because we didn't win them and we don't deserve them and we were only given them because of his grace and mercy. We're going to take all of our rewards and we're going to set them at the feet of Jesus. The only reason I'm here, Lord, is because of you. The only reason I made it, Lord, is because of you. The only reason I have a crown is because of you. The only reason there's stones and onyx and pearls and whatever else is beautiful that's in this crown, it's only because of you. And the reason I give is because of him. Amen. Can we stand to our feet this morning? They, there's envelopes probably in the chairs there. You can use those envelopes. Um, you can fill it out. If you're giving online, you can do it very simply. You can do it with your phone by texting area code 650 900 59 You guys can bring those down and set them if you gentlemen like. Um, you can ask for help if you haven't. If you need some help for somebody to help you get online, you can go. To, we have a Tithely. We have a church app that is on Tithely. Um, all you have to do is search for Praise Chapel of Almani, and and it'll come up. You can follow all the directions, and it'll it'll get you to giving. The easiest way to give is if you're here. I actually actually the easiest way now is electronically, and and over three quarters of our church now give electronically, and so you can do it on a regular basis. You can set it to every week that it'll do it, or twice a month, or once a month. However, it works for you. Those of you watching us on Facebook, we thank you. Those of you that are joining us that are family, we're so glad to Instagram because many of you have sent finances in and we're greatly appreciative because you know what? We're still standing. We're still standing. Come on. We're still standing. Woo! I want to be a weeble for Jesus. You know why? Say why. I'm going to tell you why. Because weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Woo! Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me, would you? Bow your heads with me. Brother, uh, Brother Oscar, way over there on my left, real loud so those folks can hear you online. Would you pray over this offering? Father God, we come before you, Father God, this morning, Father God. Thanking you, Father yes. God. Mm, thank you, Father Jesus. Father God, for who you are, Father God. For all that you're doing, Father yes. God. Even though we don't see it, Father God, you are always moving, Father yes. God. Yes. And we thank you. Father yes. God, for what you're doing, Father God. Yes. I lift up these tithes, Father God, these offerings, Father God, to further your will and yes. to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. Amen. Before you sit down there, I want you to sing that verse with me. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on. Woo. Woo. You can be seated. God bless you. You can be seated. You know what? Uh, Brother Will, if you could just get that song ready at the end of this message in our service. We're going to sing through that song. Those of, you, those of you ladies, Sister Anna and Sister Mona, if you could just be prepared. Um, and we can, uh, we can sing that to the Lord. I like that song. Yes, sir. I like that song. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Glad you're here. The Lord put something on my heart. You know, we're at the end of the year, and um, to be honest with you, most of the time at the end of the year, I, I, I preach without any notes. I do. I share what's on my heart. I had to write some things down <clears throat> because... My, my heart's been straying a little bit, man. It's, it's, it's been fluttering around, and I've needed some help from the Lord. And he helped me. He, he helped me. Hallelujah. Did you know God will help you? Yes. Jesus said you have not because you ask not. You ask not. So we have a new year that's coming in in about seven days. And this is a good thing. But a new year brings new thoughts. New concepts, new ideas, but it also brings a time to look and to rearrange and take a good look at how last year was. I don't want to focus on that, 
Because I've come to the point where I don't think evaluation helps us very much. I've said it for many years, and I've used it. I've passed out more stuff in our leadership and with the men and the women. You know, take a good look. How's your prayer life? How's this? How's that? And I don't think it's really worked that well for many people. I think what happens is that we look at what we haven't been. We take a look back at what we weren't doing right or where we missed the mark. And rather than, rather than knowing that really that doesn't matter much, what matters is what are you going to do now? So this morning, that's what I want to do. I want to I minister to you what I titled Making a Difference. And I'm using a story that's really unique. I want you to go with me to the book of Genesis, if you can. Genesis chapter number 32. And we're going to not dissect, but we're going to use it kind of as a launching pad where Jacob wrestles with God. Now, before I, before I get into this, um, you might, you might not know, so let me give you a little insight. Jacob is... Is the, is the brother of Esau. He is the son of Abraham. He's in a, uh, got a blessing that he owns a birthright now, but he got it because he stole it. Right. His name means supplanter, which means deceiver, a con artist. A supplanter is somebody who would con a king out of his crown. Right. A supplanter is someone that would, that, would, that, would talk, uh, that would talk to somebody and then get you to buy something that you don't need. Why'd you buy it? Ah, they just, man, they talk so good. That's a supplanter, deceiver, scammer, schemer, whatever you want, okay? So, so Jacob has come to a point where, you know, God is doing things in his life and God loves him, but Jacob's got some issues. Right. He's never been able to deal with these issues and God has never had the ability to deal with those issues, but now he does. Verse number 22 of chapter 32 of the book of Genesis. This is during a time here where, where Jacob is dealing with things. Jacob prepares to meet his brother Esau. Esau is the brother he stole the birthright from. Jacob is a scared. If you're from the neighborhood, you know that word. He's afraid. He has fear in him because he feels that his brother Esau not only is angry with him but wants to do him harm and the, the shyster doesn't think he'll win this fight, and so he's worried. Verse 22 says, That night Jacob got up and took his two wives and his two female servants and his eleven sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok, which is a river. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Now, get this picture if we can. Jacob takes his wives, he takes his belongings, his possessions, he crosses a river, puts everything on the other side because he knows trouble's coming. When you know the thief is coming, you hide your stuff. If you, <laughs> if you have a family member that's, that's just got glue on their fingers. And if you lost a gold tooth and left it on the counter somewhere and that gold tooth would disappear, if you knew that family member was coming over or that you owed them money, you would hide the money that's hanging around in your house. So Jacob, that's what he did. He crossed on the other side and he was left alone. And as he was alone, a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man, verse 25, saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Now, there's no way that Jacob could have wrestled with an angelic being. Somehow God had to use an angelic being and had to use the form of a human being to wrestle with Jacob. He didn't, he didn't wrestle a, a, a lion, a tiger, a bear. He didn't wrestle a dinosaur. He didn't wrestle a, a, a dragon. He wrestled a man. An enemy that he thought was an enemy. 
In reality, I don't think he thought it was an enemy. I believe Jacob knew exactly what was taking place. He knew God was on his way to deal with him because his brother was on his way to deal with him. So at daybreak, verse 26, the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what's your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? And then he blessed him there. So Jacob, verse 30, called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. You see, yes. Jake, Jacob knew. Here's a little insight. Jacob had to know that this person was sent from God. And Jacob understood that since this person was sent from God, there's no way that God is going to let him kill me. Right. I believe that's why Jacob wrestled so well. Wrestling is a rough sport. If you've ever wrestled in anything, if you, you might be thinking, Man, I wrestled with myself. It's a rough sport. <laughs> it takes your energy. It drains your energy out. I mean, fighting is one thing, but wrestling takes every month. Your pinky gets tired. When you're wrestling. And so I believe that Jacob knew this man was from God. I don't know what he is. I don't know if he's an angel or a prophet or what. But he's battling me. And I think that's why Jacob fought so hard and so strong and would not let him. He can't kill me because he's got something for me. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel. And he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day... The Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us, guide us. Allow us, Father, to, to grasp the spirit of your word and the challenge of your truth and the challenge of this new year, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be challenged by your Holy Spirit that our lives would make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This is a very peculiar story, if I can say it that way, of a guy named Jacob who has a wrestling match with God one night, wasn't an angelic being, so somehow that man who wrestled with him had to have a presence and a strength and an authority and permission by only God himself. God came to him in a physical form. This is an incredible thing. This is an awesome experience. But he came to them that way so that Jacob could learn some very deep, deep lessons about himself. Why am I doing this? Because this book that we're going to start reading, church is going to teach us and, and learn us and reveal that there are some deep things about ourselves that we've ignored. Yes, sir. And because we've ignored them, we often are not very healthy. And when we're not healthy, people come into our church and they obtain our unhealthiness. So, so this is an incredible experience that he has, and he learned some things about himself. There, there came a point in this fight when God asked a very simple question. Here's the question. What is your name? What is your name? What's your name? Right. You know, it's funny, okay? Think about this. What is your name? And J Jacob replied to him, Jacob. He replied. And he said, your name will no longer be Jacob. That's what the man told him. From now on, you'll be called Israel. Because you have fought with God and with men, and you have won. Amen. 
You have won. <laughs> Tell me I'm a winner. Right? Don't we love it when somebody... Now, uh, now obviously, you and I know that, that God knew Jacob's name. Right? God knew his name. But he wanted Jacob to declare his own name. He wanted Jacob to own his issue. Let's do another message. <laughs> he wanted Jacob to own up to why he ended up with that name. Right. He wanted Jacob to, to confess, if you would, to speak it out, to say it out, to tell the truth and shame the devil. Right? You ever hear that around here? He wanted him... He wanted Jacob to be able to own up to his own identity and to the, and to the life and the lifestyle that, that Jacob had chosen to live up to this time. Jacob was a con artist. He was a shyster. He was a conniver. When he wanted stuff, he figured out how he could connive. Now, li now listen, listen, listen. God had a destiny for this man. Just because he was a shyster and just because his name was Jacob, that didn't erase what God wanted to do with his life. It just took the Lord a little longer. Right. It took him a little longer to get him to the place where he could actually do what he wants to do with him. Instead of being able to use him at a young age, the Lord had to wait till he got a little older. Right. Woo, there's another message right in there. Take that note down and hand it to me after church. <laughs> Jacob, <laughs> Jacob had to confess it. He had to, he had to speak it. He had to, he had to confess his identity. Yep. I'm a deceiver. I'm a con artist. I'm a, I'll, I'll, I want to use coupons to get away from, with stuff I don't have to do. Right? Then God did something that was incredibly, incredibly, awesomely gracious. He renames Jacob. The deceiver changes, the deceiver has his name changed to Israel. Jacob means the deceiver. Israel is the prince. There's two things I want to make note of. I didn't put these notes down there, Will. I'm just kind of, kind of freelancing here, freestyling. <laughs> two lessons in this. If we're going to move forward in this new year that's coming, we got six days, seven days. If we're going to move forward and we're going to heal... And we're going to recover from our hurts, right? If we're going to recover from our habits, amen. you don't have to say amen. You guys can just be really quiet because all those people on Facebook and Instagram, they're shouting. I see the camera shaking. They're shouting so loud. If we're going to move forward and recover from our hangups, you and I, we have to be willing to get honest about who we have been who we have been, who we have chosen to be up to this point. It doesn't do us any good to look at the year that's passed and try to do an evaluation if we already know that that evaluation is just not going to be a good one. We've got to be willing to get honest. Like Jacob, yes. My name, Jacob, you knew that, but you wanted me to say it, huh? Yes, God, I've been a deceiver. I used people. Amen. I had some emotional issues. Amen. I've been addicted to things. Amen. You can be an addict and not be addicted to drugs. Come on, Amen. You can be emotionally yes, addicted. Sir. Always needing attention. Oh, who? <laughs> the camera's shaking again. Take it easy. Be calm. We're getting somewhere here. Amen. Honesty. Honesty. Say honesty. That's the only way. That's the only way to start healing. That's the only way to start a new year. That's the only way to be honest, to get honest with yourself and use that honesty. Can the church say amen? amen. The second thing, 
The second thing is God has a new and a, and, and a unique and a different identity for us. Just like Jacob. You know, the awesome thing about God is he never defines us by our failure. Listen to me loudly, church. He never defines us by our failure. God never defines us by our sin. He didn't tell Jacob what his name was. He said, what's your name? Right. Say your name, Jacob. Jacob said it. Jacob could have said, you know my name. Why do I have to say my name? Jacob said his name and God said, not your name anymore. Man. It's not your name any longer. He wants us to get honest about our failures, honest about our lack, honest about our sin, but he sees who we can be. He sees what we can be. God doesn't look at us as what we're not. He looks at us as what we can be. And yet we're defeated more by the fact that we focus on what we are not. The Lord declares us, as he did to Jacob, he declares us to be that new person ahead of time. That new year isn't here yet. It's six days away, seven days away. But God has been declaring you to be that new person that he wants you to be. He's called you to be. He needs you to be. He has for you. You have his permission for you to be that person. Ahead of time. Before the day comes, before the day comes, we have, the, we have the rest of our lives, we have the rest of a new year to live up to the new name. Amen. Our biggest problem is we focus on the old name. Yes, sir. You know, I remember a long time ago, I'm not going to say who, my wife and I, Sister Didi, you can ask her, uh, you know, there, there was a couple, a few people that got saved. In, in Maywood and, and, and gave their lives to Christ, started coming to church probably the early 80s. And one of the things they did is they, they eliminated people from calling them by their nickname. They didn't want to be called by the name that everybody that grew up around them knew them, the name that it was used when they were in school, the name that was used when they were around family and friends, the name that you might have had when you were in the neighborhood, they totally stopped that. Some of them had them where you could see them and they got rid of them because they didn't want that name. They didn't even want to hear it. They'd put, they'd put, they'd put Band-Aids over it like they hurt themselves. See, the Lord knows what we are. And he knows what we've been. But he chooses, like Jacob, he chooses not to think of that. He chooses not to use that. Whatever your identity has been to this point, up to here, no matter how disappointing you might think it is, no matter how ugly you might think it is, no matter how difficult you might think it is, no matter what it is, you, you think your story that, 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 this year it's going, that, that this year is going to be the same, but it's not going to be the same. Because God has a completely different future, a completely different year, a completely different move of God in mind for you. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. And God wants to name you according to who you can be, according to your potential, not what you have been. But what you can be, not your past, but your future. Right. Woo! With that song, he's the God of the mountains and he's the God of the valley. Right? A different you can make a different new year. A different you can make a different new year. I'm going to tell you some stories. Is that okay? I'm going to tell you some stories. I'm going to tell you a story. They don't, know, they don't know who the author is. I did some homework on this because it's an incredible story. But it goes back to 1100 A.D. We're talking almost 1,000 years ago, right? Am I close? 1100 A.D. When I was a young man, the story says, I wanted to change the world. I found it was difficult 
to change the world. So I tried to change my nation. When I found I couldn't change the nation, I began to focus on my town. I couldn't change the town. And as an older man, I tried to change my family. Now, as an old man, I realize the only thing I can change is myself. Amen. And suddenly I realize that if long ago I had changed myself, then I could have made an impact on my family. And my family could have made an impact on my town and our town. And the town's impact could have changed the nation. And I could have indeed have changed the world. We live in a, in, a, in, a, in a time right now where people are asking for a change. People ask for a change, but, but people are unwilling to change. People want things to be different, but they're unwilling to be different. They, wanna, they, want, they want their kids to be different, but they're not, they're not willing to be a different parent. They want their spouse to be different, but they're not willing to be a different spouse. Notice I didn't say men and women because, you know, I like, I like tamales and things brought to me and cookies and stuff, you know. I want to cause a war here, right? Right? It's a society that we live in. People are just like that. I, 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 I want to go to a different job because I, I don't like this job. What kind of person were you at that job? See, if, 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 if you're not the kind of person that God's called you to be on that job, of course you wouldn't want to be on that job because being on that job as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ, you got to act the way you're supposed to be. you got to be the way you're supposed to be. you got to testify. Your life, your light has to shine in that job. You definitely have to be different. Not like everybody else. Acting all foolish. Right? Just say amen. Just say, I hear you. Look at this. Camera shaking. Camera shaking. We live in that world today. People want the world to be different, but they're not willing to be different. And the ones that are making a difference are out of their minds. Some of us are old enough to remember some of the protests that were done back when we were young. Everybody ended up in jail. Not now. Protests, South t-shirts. It's a great thing, a barbecue. We want change, but we're unwilling to change. Amen. Jacob came to the place in his life where he realized that change is inevitable. So God honored Jacob's request. What's your prayer? Lord, use me at any cost. Really? Right. Really? Right. Because that cost might be high. Well, uh, well, what if it ain't? Well, if it ain't, it ain't. But it is sometimes. I've watched it with my own eyes. Would you, would you still say, I am going to be who God has called me to be no matter what? Whatever it takes, I am going to serve the Lord and I am going to shine His light and I am going to be a testament to the goodness of God. Let me tell you another story. You've heard this story. It's a story called the starfish. But I'm going to break it down to you in a way that you have never thought of. Once there was a man and he was walking along the beach. <laughs> Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you've heard it. Come on, you know it. He's walking along the beach. The sun was shining. It was a beautiful day. Beautiful day. Off in the distance as he's walking, he could see a person going back and forth running back and forth between the surf's edge and the beach. And he's going back and forth. As he's walking, he sees this person up there. He's wondering what's going on. Maybe he thinks he's riding in the sand or something. Back and forth, this person goes back and forth. And he gets moving. He's, he's walking. He gets a little bit closer. And as he gets closer and he gets next to them, the man approaches him. He sees that there are hundreds of starfish stranded on the sand as a result of the natural action of the tide. It brought up all kinds of stuff onto the shore. 
And the man was struck by the, by the, uh, by the apparent uh, uh, helplessness or futility of the task that was going on. There were far too many starfish. And many of them were definitely going to perish. So as he got closer, the person was, was doing his thing and he continued the task. He was picking up a starfish one by one and he was throwing them back into the water. As he got close to the man, he told him, Hey, you must be crazy. You've got to be out of your mind. There are thousands of miles of beach and they're probably covered with starfish because of the tide. You can't possibly make a difference. The person looked at him, kind of squinted. Then he stooped down and he picked up one more starfish. He threw it back into the ocean and he turned back to the man and he said, it sure made a difference to that one. We often think of that man Making a difference. Yeah! Yeah! I'm going to make a difference. But you know who we relate to? You know who people relate to more than anything? The man who was walking on the beach, complaining. Complaining about people wasting their time. Why are you trying to help those kind of people? Why are you going out of your way for those? There's so many of those people. You cannot make a difference. Do you want to know why most Christians never win anybody to the Lord? Because they don't focus on one person and put their heart and their soul and their time and their energy into bringing one person to Christ. One person to Christ. Picking them up. And when I got saved, I was not allowed. I had my own cars, and they were better than the cars that picked us up for church, right? I think I'm going to get in trouble for that one. Hopefully, hopefully they won't watch this uh, online. But my cars were definitely in better shape. But they would not let me drive to church. They wanted to pick me up. They wanted me to sit next to them. Sit us. We were sitting next to them. We in a in a in a to church smoking and and no, I wasn't that bad. I'm I'm adding. I'm I'm ad libbing. I'm ad libbing. Pastor Frank's going to kill me. I'm telling you right now, he's going to kill me. Even though I had my own car, they picked, they picked us up. They picked us up. We went to lunch with them. Every Sunday, for Sundays, for a few Sundays, for a few Sundays, I said, I can drive there. I'm not helpless. His, his goal was to make a difference in this life. Keep, keep this person around him. Most of us identify with the guy complainers. People, you know, the people in the church that complain like crazy, but they do nothing to join and help. They just complain. People say, "Why don't? Why did you do that? How come they don't do that? How, how come we can't do that? How come we can't? Do, how come you don't do something? Just do something. Just do one thing without complaining." It's so simple, and yet we're caught up in a world of people who complain. I don't think I like the way they do that. Well, how do you do it? Well, I really don't. Well, then I think we ought to keep doing it the way we do until you figure out a better way. I was on an outreach one time. I told this story a couple of times. I was on an outreach with one of the pastors and when the churches first started in Orange County, and this was a long time ago in the 80s, and we were doing an outreach, and we were knocking on a door, and there was this lady that began to rebuke this young pastor. He was going to be the new pastor, and he's passing out flyers, inviting people to come to church. And, 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 and there were some brothers with bullhorns walking down the streets, just giving their testimonies. You know, they were bound by drugs. You know, Jesus can set you free. And the lady goes, I don't think what you're doing is right. And he said, why? He said, because you're disturbing our peace, and we, we, we go to church if we want to go to church. And it was like, wow. And he says, are you a Christian? She goes, of course I'm a Christian. And he goes, well, how do you do it? She goes, well, we, we, don't, we don't do it. And he goes, I, I'd rather stick with ours. Amen. At least we're doing something. You're not doing anything except complaining. And wham, the door closed. And I told him, not a good outreach like that, bro. It's not, a, it's not a, just hand the flyer and get out of the way. We live in a world. We live in a society. We get caught up in the same thing. We complain about all kinds of things, but we never step in to do something about it. 
We have great ideas, but we do nothing. I'll join it as soon as you put together, and as soon as you get it working, I'll, I'll come on board. You don't want the hard labor. You don't want the hard labor. This is why it's so hard to keep people doing things. As soon as something goes wrong, they're done. Amen. As soon as something negative happens, they're done. And our lives testify to that. Our children testify to that. Our marriages testify of those things. We want your life to make a difference in this new year. Every generation must reach their generation. Take a look around. Look around here. Those of you that are looking, take a look around. So you right here, maybe there's a few of you here. There's some young ones, young ones that are hanging around here. But you right here, most of you folks, listen to me. You are not going to win a teenager to Christ. Right. They think you're corny. <laughs> most of you here are not going to win some 16-year-old, 17-year-old to Christ. You ain't. You can identify with people that are like you. You can touch and reach out to people that are like you. Young people have to win over young people. Yeah, I didn't get saved by some old person. I got saved by somebody. My saint led me to the Lord, prayed with me. And I came to church with all my baggage. We came to church with all our baggage. Actually, we came to church, but I had all the baggage. Every generation has to reach their generation. Men, men have to reach men and women, young and old, who we are. It, it, it identifies with that. God, God has got something new in this new year. If you're married, you can win over. You can win and reach out to marry. But if you're married, you're going to have a hard time reaching out to single people. It's going to be difficult. I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's going to be difficult. Right. Teenagers, young people, midlife. You're, you're in those upper 30s into the mid 40s and now they're saying midlife is mid 40s into the 50s wherever it is every culture every person reaches and connects to that that their upbringings and the lifestyle and the things like that that's where god uses to identify we have a brand new year coming in Amen. right around the corner and there's so much that god can do to use our lives but we got it we got to do like jacob we have to own our, our lack. We have to own our, our mess ups. We have to own what we miss out. We have to own our laziness. There's, we have to own it and say, you know what, Lord, this year, in Jesus' mighty name, this year, I want to see you move in my life. This new year, I want to see God move in lives. I want to win somebody to the Lord. I want to bring somebody to Christ. I want to teach them and help them grow. I want to sit down during the week with them and read with them through the word of God. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Come on. Those of you that are watching us live on Facebook, those of you that are on Instagram, close your Bibles up if you would, and if you'd like, you're welcome to stand also. Thank you, Pastor. You know, it's, it's a question that a lot of people don't want to ask themselves. And most of the time in the past, when we ask this kind of question, most of us would give up. I want my life to make a difference. It's not gonna, you may not think it'll make a difference to the world. You're probably right. Not to a nation. You're probably right. Not to a town. You're probably right. We're just, we're just another church in the city of Almonte. Right. There's a lot of great churches, great people of faith in this city, right? Yes, sir. But you have a family. Come on. And you have people around you and friends that your life can identify with. Amen. And this new year, God wants to bring fruit into your life. God wants to bring fruit into your life. There needs to be somebody walking with you as you walk with Christ. Amen. If that hasn't happened in a long time, something's wrong. Yes. Something's wrong. Here's a new year that God has given us to make a difference. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me all across this building? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God. I pray, Lord, as a, as a, as a, as a pastor, Lord, as an as a under-shepherd, God, as I, if, to extend my hand and lay them on the, on the crowns of each and every person in this building and those watching live on Facebook. I pray, God, that you would help us 
and give us strength. I pray the anointing of your Holy Spirit. I pray the forgiveness of God right now where you're standing, right now on Facebook, on Instagram, right now. Take your life and take this moment to say, Lord, where, where I've lacked, God, I confess. Where I've missed the mark, Lord, no problem. I'm owning up to it, God, because I want what you have for me in the new year. I want to be a part of your will, the will of God for my life in this new year. I don't even want to look back. I want to look forward. I want to look forward. Father, forgive us. Help us to regain our momentum. Help us to refocus our sights. As a hunter refocuses his sights to get a better aim, help us to get a better aim on your will and your desire to see a world come to you, even in the midst of this COVID crisis, Lord. We pray that you would bring it to an end slowly but surely in this new year. And we pray for fruitfulness in our lives. In Jesus' name. Woo! Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Pastor Johnny, would you come and dismiss us in prayer? Father, this morning we just thank you, Lord, for your grace upon grace in our life, God, and the precious blood, Lord, that was shed because of your grace and your mercy in our lives, Father. And this morning, Lord, you, you're giving us your word, God, your manna, your, for the day, God, to strengthen us, God. And I would pray this morning, Lord, that we would allow the Holy Spirit, Father, uh, to stir us, God, and to allow your word to be embedded deeply within our souls and our minds and our bodies, God, that it would translate, Father God, into, into action, Father God, that we would be who you have called us to be as a, as a body of Christ, God, as a family, God, as an individual this morning, Lord. And, and God, I pray, Lord, that we would allow you, Lord, to, to use our lives to make a difference, Father God, that we would be the vessels of light and love that you have called us to be, God. I pray and I speak your blessings, your anointing, Father, upon this congregation, God, upon this family, God, those that are here and those, Father God, that are on social media this morning, God. I pray you bless them, God. Use them, bring deliverance, bring healing, God, for the glory of your kingdom this morning, Father. I pray this morning, God, your love most of all, Lord, would flow through us in your grace. We love you, we pray you and your church says thank you and God bless this morning in amen. Jesus name and you be dismissed amen, amen and amen thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you don't forget your book if you want one you got to get one it's a cute little book amen what's that little thing for that huh? what's that little remote for? Just a little remote for that thing that's for these lights yeah thanks you guys man Messing me up, bro.